Hey there, friends. This is Pete with BananaHobby.com. This video is specifically geared towards uh, y'all out there that purchased an FMS type of a Warbird um, or an EDF jet, uh, FMS Blitz RC. Uh, what's going on right now that has been brought to my attention is that uh, a lot of you have been receiving these types of Warbirds here the, in the 1400 millimeter category. Um, and uh, when you're setting it up on your radio system and you're plugging in after you're done building it and you're plugging in the, the uh, battery to the speed control, you're getting no sound. Uh, no beeping, nothing like that. And, but your control surfaces seem to be working. And this is the perfect example here. This is actually, this P51 in front of me here, this was actually returned by a customer for that specific reason. So I'm going to go through a couple of things and talk about the speed controls that are inside these FMS Warbirds. Um, they need to be throttle calibrated. The endpoints need to be calibrated. So we're going to go ahead and run through that. This was returned for that specific reason. Um, I'm not exactly sure what other reasons that, I, that this came back, but we're going to use this today for you. And I'm going to show you how to calibrate the throttle for the uh, first time after when you first purchase the airplane. Again, this is for the FMS Warbirds only and, and you know from the smaller ones to the larger 1700 millimeter ones, especially the 1700 millimeter ones. You may get lucky and when you get one of these, they come when you get it plugged in, everything is actually already uh, working. Sometimes your radio syncs up that way and it actually works. So this is your FMS ESC manual. You want to make sure you keep this handy because there's a lot of programming parameters in here that you want to actually uh, use if you end up changing something in the programming. So we're going to set that aside there. So today we're going to talk about the programming, the first time programming of this uh, speed controller and we are using the JR9503. There's a couple of things that I want to talk about as well with the, uh, let's see, with the the programming side of, uh, of the speed controllers. Number one, keep in mind if you, by all means, if you have a Futaba, if you have a Futaba transmitter, your throttle channel for all of these speed control setups will be reversed. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go to servo reversing and reverse your throttle channel. This is for Futaba radios only. That's about as far as I know with the uh, reversing only. Uh, right now, it only applies to Futaba. I think there's one other radio out there, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. But if you have JR, if you have Spectrum, if you have uh, High Tech, you don't need to reverse the throttle channel. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, just jump right into this here and see what's going on with this. I'm going to plug in. I'm just using a small little Park Flyer receiver here just for the per programming you know, purposes here. So I'm going to plug in the throttle channel. And then I'll plug in an elevator servo, okay, and the rudder servo here. This is the 1400 millimeter P51 Mustang. It's just, you know, so sad to see these airplanes come back. And, um, you know, because of uh, this issue, because there's really not any, any other problems with it, we're going to go ahead and check to make sure the ESC is completely plugged in, which it is. Right now, I'm not sure exactly what's going on with this one, but it sounds like from reading the notes that the, our patron, our customer that had this, had that exact same issue. So right now, I'm going to just go ahead and plug this in. This is a four cell, and uh, we're going to see if we hear any beeps here. Okay, we have nothing. We don't have any beeps or anything like that, but we know that the BEC that's in the speed control is actually uh, working properly, and it does. it is sending a signal to the servos because we have an elevator, and then we have the rudder servo both working, as you can hear there. This is where we go into the programming mode. If this, you know, this portion here is exactly what's going on to a lot of you out there, and that's why I'm just making this quick little tip video to try to help you all out there, you know, with... Uh, with our purchases and having this issue and not having to send this whole airplane back, which is, uh, we none of us want to do that. 
All of us want to just build these things and go fly. Okay, this is what you do. I've unplugged the battery to the speed controller and I've uh, gone ahead and turned off my transmitter here. You want to do this now. You want to turn on your transmitter, set your throttle stick here to the full up position. Okay, make sure that you don't have any blades on there. Make sure that if you built the airplane already, keep the blades off. Or if you do, if you don't want to keep the blades off of it or take the blade off of it, make sure you stand behind the airplane and hang on to the airplane. Okay, transmitter's on. Your throttle stick is in the, high, the, the highest position, all the way up. Okay, what I'm going to do now, you have to be kind of quick, too. Once you plug it in, you should hear, in a, in the, once you plug it in, you give it about a second or so, you'll hear two initializing tones. It'll beep twice. As soon as you hear that, you want to drop the throttle stick to the lowest position and just let it sit there, and then you'll hear two more initializing tones, and it should have an initializing tone to go ahead saying that it, uh, it is actually programmed and then ready for use. So let's go ahead right now. We're going to shut it off, okay? Transmitter on, throttle stick in the up highest position. Let's go ahead and try this. And just uh, listen for the tones with me here. Those are the tones. I just dropped it to low. Okay, initializing tone. Okay, those two beeps says, says that the speed control just read the positioning of this. Now, all you have to do is unplug the battery, turn off the transmitter. I'm going to turn it back on now. Everything normal. The throttle is all the way down in the ready to fly position, down in the idle, lowest position. Now when we plug this in, the speed control should initialize and uh, be ready for use. Okay. That's it. Again, this was a customer's return because of this exact issue. As you can see right there, it took a few seconds and she's programmed. And now we can go ahead and throttle up. And this plane, you know, this P-51 is running just as it should. It's so sad to see something come back, you know, because of that programming, a little programming issue there. And I know that many of you have called us and tried to work something out over the phone to get them programmed. But that's how easy it is to program that. And, you know, again, you saw the steps. And just follow those steps, and you should be able to program this ESC without any issues whatsoever. And you want to leave your your EPA, if you're running a JR, your travel adjust, if you're running Fataba, if you're running high tech, and it's called endpoint adjustment or your EPA on your throttle channel, leave it stock, which is 100 100, 100 on each side. Just don't touch any of those numbers and uh, try not to do anything else there. All you have to do is do the, the stick endpoint calibration right there, that what we just did from the get go, and she'll be ready to run. This speed control is already configured for this aircraft. You have all the, uh, the settings already configured for this outrunner motor, so there's no programming needed whatsoever. The only thing you need to do, if in the fact that when you first open the box for, for your FMS product, and you plug in, everything's ready to, ready to go, and you plug in your battery, and you get no tones, but you do have servo movement. If you get no tones, you want to follow that, those steps right there and uh, program what we call a throttle endpoint calibration, and that's it. So this is now ready to go. All right, I wanted to add another segment really quick here that'll probably cover most of the bases as far as uh, your ESC making different beeps, beeping sounds. This next one is very, very common as well, and it's just because this only reason is because your throttle stick is in the wrong positioning. Okay, if you turn on your radio and <clears throat> your throttle stick is a little bit farther up or in the middle or something, when you plug it in, you will have this tone. Okay, you're going to hear a really rapid tone. This tells me, that will tell me that the throttle stick is in the wrong position. So go ahead and lower your throttle stick all the way down and that tone will actually go away. And also, if you're getting that tone from the get-go, then you want to go into your, your radio and then sub-trim. Uh, go ahead and play with the uh, travel adjust on the low side until the beeping stops. So again, let's go ahead and turn it on. Okay, we have the throttle stick in the wrong position. It's not at the lowest position, so you'll hear this tone. 
And then we'll lower the throttle stick, and it goes away. Again, and or, if you're getting that tone from the get-go and your throttle stick is all the way down, there's a couple of things. You Possibly, it's just going into your travel adjust or your endpoint adjustment on the low side, adjust it until it stops. You can go, the numbers, you can actually go higher or lower and see which side where it actually stops and it initializes. Um, if it's not that, then your throttle, actually, your uh, throttle position is in reverse. So you have to switch the uh, throttle positioning and servo reversing in here. But most of the time, it's not that. Because if you were like that, sometimes it'll just go into programming mode. So that is the segment with the throttle stick in the wrong positioning and you're getting a fast tone. I hope this video has been helpful and I, you know, I apologize for not being more specific in some of my videos if you guys and gals out there are having this kind of an issue. But again, very, very simple, simple uh, programming there and uh, we'll get you back in the air there. So I really appreciate all of you for your support and, you know, if you see anything that you want to see in a, in a video from me as far as like setup or anything like that or tips, go ahead and leave it on the comment box right below here and uh, I'll go ahead and check that and I'll see if I can make a video of something that will be more helpful to you and have you enjoy your time flying airplanes much more. My name is Pete. Thank you all once again. We'll see you next time.